Hello ladies and gents, and I got a nice old one for us today. King Edward VII pub in Stratford. It was built in the early 18th century. It's opposite St John's Church, and it has its original pedimented doors and early 19th century bay windows. It was originally called the King of Prussia, either in honor of Frederick the Great, or else after King Frederick William IV, who visited the area in 1842 to meet Elizabeth Fry the prison reformer. However, the name was changed at the start of World War I for patriotic reasons. So yeah, it's a nice old one and we're gonna have a nice tour of this pub inside. So I hope you're all gonna enjoy. Um, we'll have a little walk around. It was a little bit busy, so we had to pause in a few places, but you'll get this and then maybe some old pictures and stuff at the end. So I hope you're all gonna enjoy this one. Um, there is, of course, St John's Church over there. The Martyrs Memorial, which is just there. And back to the pub. So, join me inside for a beer in here. So, in we go. And in we go. Lovely old pub, this one really is nice. Look, and there's those um, original bay windows. This is a refilm, this one. The outside to exterior bit I'd done about a week ago, and it was on a football day, and it was absolutely packed in here. It was really busy, so I couldn't really do too much. So I've come back and done it again. But this is it years ago, look. that picture. Nice old fireplace. That's the function room up there but um, you can't get up into there at the moment because there's a problem with the ceiling. So but I will show you something of it when we get up around somewhere. Here's the bar. I'll get that around so I can take a picture. Never run after you fairly early, so look at these old flagstones, look. Here's some of its original etched glass, you know the old glass they had in the pubs. King Edward the Seventh. AD 1913, yeah, they, they changed its name pretty quickly because of patriotic reasons in the build-up to the First World War. Some nice old steps there, we're going to, because there's a lot more of this around the back as well, so that's where we're going to be going. But this is nice here, let me bang the flash on, so that'll probably help us. Here we go, look, original tiles. As I said before, like the old gym palaces, they were uh, designed to be lavish, really. You get to see the, the uh, etched glass in reverse. I love places like this. off and this is the saloon bar this one and arriving early is lucky really because there's no music on Nice 
this old fireplace. I've had a haircut now, so I'm not, not too ashamed to show myself. I'm going proper bald. I, I chuckle every time because uh, I look at it because it reminds me of my Uncle Len. His hair was like that. He only had hair around the sides, bless him. And my granddad was like that as well by the time he died. And he was only 57, so, yeah. Thing I told you about the problem with the ceiling. Look, skylight up there. I love the old stairs and woodwork and everything. You can actually see the age of this. And you think of all the different people that would have traipsed up and down the stairs. Right. Good one here. Because there's something outside in the beer garden that's really worthwhile showing. That's the old beer cellar down there, of course. Are you down? And this is the thing that's worthwhile showing. The King of Prussia, circa 1904. The name was changed to King Edward VII in 1914. But this is the uh, an image which you'll see at the end of the video. You'll see the original of this image. This is a mural that's been painted on here, of course. www. Francesco Tassi it Frantax Retta is obviously the artist. So a big shout out to him or her. I think Francesca Francesco is male. I think Francesca is female, but if I am wrong then I apologise. Yeah look, I love the detail that's gone into this. Using the signs and everything. Jarrington's and Co. Fine Owl. Very good. Look more of that etched glass there. Didn't notice that bit. That's nice. It's not easy filming and drinking at the same time, you know. <laughs> That'll take us back to where we was. St John's Church just over the road there. You can't really see it from here. 
but I hope you've all enjoyed the tour and now for a couple of historical images including this one and for our historical look back firstly we jump back to 1904 with the pub as it was as its previous name the King of Prussia and this image here is the inspiration for the mural you see on the the wall of the pub garden as it says here the uh, pub was present as the King of Prussia by 1765 and the name was changed to King Edward VII in 1914 for patriotic reasons because of the First World War here we see the pub in the interwar years 1935 just four years before the start of the Second World War and really it hasn't changed too much apart from if you look at the bay window over to the extreme left it's it's quite different to what we see today here's the pub in 2002 uh, taken by Brian Berry you can see the bay window is now reinstalled again as a bay window the doors have been put back to how it was originally now these are pictures that I took so obviously 2023 and here we see it the uh, King Edward VII formerly the King of Prussia is a daytime view of it and it's nice that the bow windows were reinstated properly and that door was taken out from the one on the left and here's a nighttime shot now for carrying on our historical look back we actually get to look at the information of some of the residents of the pubs so off we go for that and looking back at some of the past residents we go as far back as 1823 Piggott's directory William Beck he was there in 1823 1826 1828 and 1828 to 9 in Piggott's directory and our house recognizes but interestingly enough if you go to 1831 licensed victuallers asylum 1831 September the 12th 1831 morning advertiser the governors and committee beg to acknowledge the receipt of the following contributions since their last advertisement William Beck King of Prussia in addition to two guineas he gave one guinea so he gave that to the licensed victuallers asylum and in 1832 to 3 you see his landlady instead William's wife Anne William himself unfortunately went mad and ended up in an asylum in between the interim of 1831 to 1832 um, his wife took over the pub for a while and you can see her here in 1832 and 1833 Piggott's directory but by 1839 the pub had been taken over by George Griff and he was there in 1844 1845 by 1847 you've got Mary Ann Carver barmaid proceedings of the Old Bailey so she appears in Old Bailey records 1848 James S King White's directory 1850 Charles Smith Potboy proceedings of the Old Bailey so another one at the Old Bailey Thomas Butler post office directory 1851 Thomas Butler is there in 1851 as licensed victualler, aged 37, head of the household, and he was born in Hungerford in Berkshire. This is the 1851 census we're looking at now. His wife was Anne, she was aged 34, born in Nottingham. Jane, his daughter, aged 2, born in Stratford. Jane Wright, a servant, aged 20, born in Egham in Surrey. John Smith, a servant, aged 28, born in Stratford. James Rand, servant, aged 20, born in Stratford. William Pettingill, stage coachman, 42, born in Bromley, Kent. And Walter Wallage, groom, aged 22, born in Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk. Because you, you have to remember, this was before the age of um, the trains and mass travel and stuff like that really took off. This was a coaching inn along one of the big roads. Then we jump to 1855 to post office directory and you've got Benjamin Godden. He's there in 1856. 1861 census, a new family. Charles Turner, licensed victualler. Age 27, he's born in Romford in Essex. And you've got Susanna A, 
Turner, his wife, age 27, she's born in London, Middlesex. Susanna A. Turner, the daughter, age 4, born in Stratford. Then you've got Ida F. Turner, daughter, aged 3, born in Stratford. Charles F. Turner, son, aged 1, born in Stratford. You've got Eliza Powell, barmaid, aged 14, born in Lynn, Norfolk. Then you've got Sarah Ann Howard, house servant, she's 22 and she was born in Stratford in Essex. William Pike, a pot boy, aged 19, born in Dartford, Kent. Then you've got Thomas Roberts, a waiter, aged 53, and he's born in Plasto. And you can see the coachman and groom have gone by now because the railways have taken off really well. 1862, Charles Turner. 1867, John Craddock. 1868, John Craddock, former licensed victualler, now bankrupt. London Gazette, 18th of September 1868. So he went bust. 1870, you've got Mrs. Rosa Ann Gates. 1871, Mrs. Rosa Ann Gates again. 1871 census, you've got a different family there. Anne Holloway, licensed victualler, widow, aged 40, and she's born in Kelvedon in Essex. Um, Ellen Holloway, daughter, aged 17, she's born in East Ham in Essex. Fanny Holloway. Daughter, aged 14, she's born in East Ham in Essex. Mrs. Smith, sorry, Miss Smith, waitress, aged 35, West Ham, Essex, she's born. And William John Potman, aged 37, born West Ham, Essex. And we go on to 1874, Mrs. Eliza A. Holloway, she's still there. She's still there in 1878 in the directories. By 1881... You've got a new family come along. This is the census. Uh, you've got G.E. Martin, publican, age 24. And he was born in St. George in the East. You've got A.S. Martin, 24. Ipswich, Suffolk. J. Clements, Potman, age 19. Born in Nurm, Essex. F.T. Stewart, barmaid, 17. Born in Harwich in Essex. George Edward Martin, Kelly's Directory, that's 1882. 1882 again, you've got Joseph Harris, Kelly's Directory. 1891 census, we have here a licensed victualler, Joseph Harris, aged 55, and he's born in Stamford in Lincolnshire. Hannah Harris, his wife, aged 54, she's born in Paddington in London. Alice Harris, his daughter, Aged 22, born in Forest Gate, Essex. Minnie Hopkins, niece, aged 14, born in Chelsea, London. Alice M. Hodgkins, assistant, 22, born in London. Minnie Bayers, assistant, 21, born in Canning Town. Alice Bennett, general servant, aged 26, born in Essex. We're going to 1886, Joseph Harris. 1896, Richard Bennett. 1898, Richard Bennett's still there, public housekeeper, proceedings of the Old Bailey, so another one that appears in court. A 1901 census is Christina Steen, head, barmaid, aged 28, um, Fulham, Middlesex. So she's a young lady running a pub on pretty much on her own. Um, in her own right, I mean. Uh, the next one is Catherine Brennan, barmaid, aged 21, born in Bow, Middlesex. Edith Bath, barmaid. 24, born in London City. Jesse Bentley, barmaid, aged 26, born in West Ham, Essex. Stella Cook, barmaid, aged 23, born in West Ham, Essex. Marion Robertson, uh, Robson, sorry, domestic servant, aged 25, born in Stepney, Middlesex. And Christina Fullerton, domestic servant, aged 19, born in West Ham, Essex. So that's an establishment entirely run and worked by women at the time. Which is interesting. 1902, we've back to the directories. Richard Bennett. 1906, Richard Bennett. 1908, Richard Bennett. 1911, Richard Bennett. Is at number 144 Romford Road. Maybe a private address. See, this is the man that owns the place. The landlords and landladies would have rented and stuff. 1911, census. Richard Bennett, licensed victualler, aged 53. Born in Newton Tracy, Devon. Uh, Sarah Jane Bennett, his wife, aged 52, born in Haywood, Wiltshire. 
Cyril Richard Bennett, son, aged 10, born in Loughton in Essex. Ethel Parker, servant, aged 24, born in Clavering in Essex. Then we go on to 1912, Richard Bennett. 1914, Richard Bennett. And 1917, Richard Bennett. And it was under the auspices of this man that the pub was changed from the King of Prussia to the King Edward VII because of the First World War and anti-German feeling. 1920, Richard Bennett, deceased, died 19th of May, it says 1820, but that's 1920, 10th of May 1921, the London Gazette, so he died by this time. 1922, the pub goes into new hands, James Gallivan, he's there in 25. 1934, George Offwood. 1938, James John Gallivan, so you've got him back again. And 1944, James John Gallivan, and this information was provided by Ewan on pubshistory.com. So, that's some of the past residents. Hope you've all found this interesting. Thanks for watching.